Hey, welcome to this video. What I'm going to look at today is two things really. One of them is a pivot table. The second one is an array formula, but using table nomenclature or table referencing. And I think it's great. I've really only just started using it. I'm not sure why it took me so long, but uh, I'm going to take you through that today. So here I've got some data. It is based upon some match analysis information and there is about 800 rows of this stuff. Um, at the moment it's sorted by player name, um, but uh, it's, um, it's over the course of about three years of information. So if I was to want to do some quick analysis, I might use a pivot table. So the first thing I want to do is convert this to a table. So on the insert tab, you can see table. And we'll take a fairly good stab at guessing the size of your data. I'm just going to say OK. And it applies some formatting, and there's plenty of style options and things if you like. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is because uh, that'll be fine. Um, it's now in table format. I also want to, instead of calling it table, I want to call it excuse me for my spelling, match data. So I'm just going to insert a pivot table. So I click anywhere inside the data set and I choose insert pivot table. It can tell that it's for the table that I've just created because it tells you up here the table range is a, a named range and I want it on a new worksheet. So here is our pivot table uh, wizard what I want to try and do is pull in player name and date of match into row labels. Second thing I want to pull in is opponent to report filter. And then finally, I want to pull in all of these fields. To values. Last step change the value field settings so that it is an average and do that for all of the six items in this box. So now what we've got is um, two items in the row labels and six items in the value labels. Now what I want to be able to do is collapse all of these dates down and luckily there's a button that does that if I click collapse entire field what we'll get now is a much simpler table of information if I wanted to go into more detail I could simply expand one of these athletes I can just see on the data page that there's not consistent date format. So I'm just going to change that. Great. And just refresh. So aside from improving the uh, decimal places and tidying all the stuff up a little bit more. This table is actually pretty useful. I can start to do things to it. One of the things I might try and do to it, and I put in a field especially for it, is look at uh, year. I want to put in a slicer. So a slicer is quite a useful, um, if you're on a PC, a useful way to interact with your data. And now I say that with uh, some uh, disappointment because it only works on PCs. Slices do not work on Macs. Now what I might try and do for a video uh, soon is show you a, a VBA solution I created that built a slicer manually that allowed uh, the same effect to occur so that you can choose either one or multiple by holding the control key down options on this slicer to populate the information. And so if I expand one of these names here, what I can do is just show 2011 or 2010 or the like. 
So pretty useful. Um, you may also wish to um, put another slicer in. For example, it's always good to have slicers where there's only a few field um, options rather than plenty, otherwise the slicer becomes too big. So you can just have a look at the games that you won and draw. Don't look at the games you lost. All right, so one way pivot table. What I don't like about pivot tables is your ability to really customize how they look and feel to the same extent, which is why I like using uh, formula based approaches if I can. Pivot tables are a lot quicker, I have to say, but um, formula ones can sometimes get a better output. So I'm going to just have a look at that now. Now, previously in a video, I looked at um, a big index array function that pulls out all the formulas relevant to a particular athlete. And then you can go ahead and do things such as dynamic charting and the like. So the first thing I want to do is create um, an option to select the athlete. And to do that, I want a, a unique list of athlete names. So an easy way to do that, if I go back to the data page, is use the advanced filter. So I'm going to select column A, click on the data tab, click on advanced filter. I want to copy to another location, unique records only. So there's a few options here. And I'm just going to place the cursor over in column N. So with an advanced filter, it really only likes placing the data on the same page as the data set. So um, you can use some code to get around that, but predominantly uh, what I tend to do is just copy that to the control panel page. I can sort alphabetically, excuse me, and then give it a name, excuse me again. All right, so if we've got athlete names, we can now start to um, put in our data validation at the top here. All right. So what I'm going to write now is a big index array formula that I've used before, but it's going to look a lot different and a lot more clean because we've got these um, table references in place. So I'm just going to get started. Equals index. So it knows the table is called match data. If I use a square bracket, it now brings me up all the list of column headings. So I want to choose player name. So that's what I'm trying to return in this column. The row number will be based upon, again, some use of the table references. And finally, this little part here, obviously just does the row counting. And I've used this several times before. And so what I'm going to do now, and there'll be some errors when I get to the bottom of the uh, list that this athlete has completed. I'm going to drag it down anyway. Here we go, finally, 81 records. And so if I drag this across, what I'll find is that what I have to do is go in and simply change this part.
next part. And this is quite easy simply because everything auto completes as I start typing. And all I have to do is hit tab to enter that in. And now I've really just achieved the same as I did on the last page where I use the pivot table but what I have done and I could put an if error in to uh, take away those errors at the bottom but I'm not going to bother for now but what I have now got the ability to do is is format and edit this to the extent that I like for example I might like to show only 20 or 30 rows instead of the whole lot I might like to format in a certain way insert certain columns inside it and so on and so on uh, pivot tables aren't quite that flexible, but uh, they certainly are very, very easy. So really the purpose of this video was to introduce that uh, table nomenclature because it really does make the writing of these functions very, very simple in comparison to using cell and sheet references. So thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon. I've got another video lined up and I should be able to get that out very soon. Thanks.